Hi, my name is Dana, and I'm a cross-stitch designer. Welcome to Peacock and Fig. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a quick tips about how to start your first cross-stitch project. So, first things you're going to need, obviously, is fabric. We have little pieces like this for the little piece I'm going to be showing you here. And I'm just going to lift the camera up. You can see you got bigger pieces for medium-sized pieces and even bigger rolls and whatnot if you're doing a really big piece like that one there. But for this one, you're just going to need a tiny little piece of fabric like this. Uh, if you want to go to my other videos, I'll link in the description. Uh, you can see more uh, information about the fabrics that you can get. Uh, you can use a hoop if you like. These little embroidery hoops. You don't have to, for this piece I won't. Obviously you'll be needing some floss, like these. These are the two colors I'm using for this particular pattern. And you'll be needing scissors, obviously. You want to cut them up, cut your thread up. You'll be needing needles. This is a tapestry needle. Uh, like I said in the other videos, you can get more description about this, but basically it's a blunted needle. It won't pierce your fabric. For this one, for all the little stitched lines, the back stitch lines, you'll be needing a normal embroidery needle as well, and that's got a much sharper point, which is better for finer work. And of course you'll be needing your pattern, and I've got this over here, so I'll be showing you how to read that in just a moment. So first things first, you're gonna knot your thread. Okay, so the first way to do it, obviously, is to tie a small knot. Just make sure your knot isn't too big and bulky, uh, otherwise it might be seen through the front of the fabric once you're framing it. A second way is called the loop method. So what you do is you actually fold your floss in half and you thread your needle that way and you're actually going to catch this loop with your needle. So if you want more details about this, uh, there's another video I'll be linking in the video description. And so, But I'll show you quickly how to do this. So you can go through the front or the back. Doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go through the back. So you pull until it's almost through, swing your needle under, and you're basically catching a little loop. Like that. Sorry. Once you've got your floss anchored, you're going to be wanting to start looking at your pattern. As you can see, I've got two colors. I've got a turquoise color here, and I've got a plum. So the turquoise, the symbol is Z. Some patterns will be black and white, some will be in color, but there always is going to be symbols or blocks of color for you to follow. This one's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and work my way across. So I've already done the one arm of that. So to finish, you come up a little hole. That's the good thing about this fabric, it's already got holes in it. And bam, cross stitch to make the next one. As you can see, there's two stitches next to each other. Each little block is one stitch. So if you can count and make an extra thread, you can learn how to cross stitch. That's it, you're making an X. Uh, pro tip, make sure your top stitch is always going the same direction, so your bottom angle should go the same way, your top angle the same way. It doesn't matter which way, as long as they're all going the same way. It makes it look prettier once it's finished. So as you can see, there's a gap here where there is no stitch on the pattern. Sorry if it keeps going in and out of focus. And do two more of those stitches. You can see two more blue here. Alright, so that's your basic cross stitch. So that's literally all there is to making the actual cross stitch itself. So I'm going to finish this up at high speed and then I'll come back to you and I will teach you how to do the back stitch which is these lines out here. Often it's in black, in this case it's bright pink. So I'll be back in a moment. Alright, there you go. You can see I've finished now. So what I'm going to be doing is finishing off my blue thread, because I don't need that anymore. You can see I've done two over, two over. 
down one row, five across, five across, three across, one across. So it's literally just counting and matching it up with what you're seeing on your printed pattern or on your screen, depending on whether you're using it digitally. All of my patterns are PDF files, so you can use them on a computer or you can print them off. So you can just go underneath one thread and then tie a little knot, or you can do what I commonly do, is just to run it under a few threads and then go back another direction. Try not to make it too bulky. Like that. And then you can snip it. There's another technique called pin stitch you can finish off with that's in one of the more advanced videos. That's fine. So there you go. That's finished. All right, now I'm going to start my back stitch and I'll show you that in a moment. All right, I'm back. So I've threaded my needle, the sharper needle, as I pointed out, with my thread. For back stitch, you usually only use one strand, but your pattern will usually tell you that or not. You can use two strands if you want a darker line. So with back stitch, it's pretty simple. It's basically straight stitches. So I'm going to start in this corner here. If I can get it through the fabric, there we go. So I'm starting here. Make sure you don't pull your knot through and down. And then you're going to go have to go back the other way because if you try to come out the same hole again, it's going to pop out and down. So basically anywhere there's these little black lines, you're going to be following. So I'm going to go around the outside edge and then I'll show you how to do these ones here. So there you go, you can see I've finished that part. So now I'm going to do these lines here on the pattern. Zoom that in. So basically to do these lines, because they're not following the edge exactly, you're just going to be counting up to figure out where they are. So you can see this one is directly one up from these center ones here, and it's right in the middle. So you're going to be starting from here and going to there. Sorry, I'm going to zoom that in for you in two seconds. So you're going to be going from there to there with this little line with this one here. All right. So the trick is with cross stitch, you're always just counting. If you're not sure, just count and you will figure it out. If you make a mistake, go back, figure out where your mistake was, and then just count. So you can see this one here starting diagonally opposite this corner, coming out of this hole and going down this one. So there we go. And then one, so you're going down three, one, two, three, in the third hole, one, two, three, third hole. If you have to count out loud to make sure you're not making mistakes, go for it. Whatever helps you get through. All right, so I'm going to speed this up and finish this off, and then I'll show you the finished product again. And there you go, done. So as again, like I did last time, I'd be finishing off my thread on the back. And then if you would like to learn how to do this little uh, finished piece here with the felt around the edges and make it into like a little key fob or scissor fob or whatever you like, uh, I just braided some strands of floss for that. Uh, you can go to the link below. There'll be a link to a blog post that will show you actually how to do slip stitch, which is how uh, this is attached. It's quite simple stitch to learn. Uh, like I said, there's lots of videos that are going to be linked in the description of this uh, to help you learn more advanced techniques and learn some of these techniques in more detail if you like. There's a whole playlist for beginners. Uh, the first three videos are really uh, detailed and go into a lot of information about your needles and your fabric and all that kind of stuff. So if you're still not sure, go to the 
uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you can get to it at bit.ly.com slash peacock YouTube. You can get to my YouTube channel. There's a whole playlist for beginners. Watch those first three videos and then uh, you should be off and running in absolutely no time and off making your first little projects. So that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments or any suggestions about videos that you would like to see me do, please feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to uh, take on all suggestions. And if you would like to access any of the free patterns at Peacock and Fig or the 20% discount for the shop or any of the other exclusive things for the Peacock Lounge members, please go to the link listed below. It's peacockandfig.com slash join hyphen now and you'll get access to all of that free stuff and I hope to see you next time for the next video. Talk to you later. Bye for now!